Hi guys, this is Rajat from EGMAT. I'm recording this video to mark the end of our quant trial and to thank you guys who participated enthusiastically in, in, in this quant trial. So with that, let me just tell you what this trial was, what are some of those stats were there. Let me actually bring in the stats over here. So this is a screenshot of one of our internal dashboards that we have for the trial. So for this trial, which we started on October 22nd, you can really see this is since October 21st, we had about 984 people who registered for the trial. Now, not everyone who registered attempted questions, um, about 550 people of all of these 984. So about 60% of you um, attempted questions, 55 to 60% give or take. In about a week, um, you guys attempted about 25,000 questions. Now, mind you, we had about uh, 300 questions in this trial. This gave us about 82 attempts per per question, uh, per, per engaged user. Um, now, two thirds of these questions were new questions um, and, and one third of these questions were old questions that existed on our platform. So hence 65% of our attempts, it's no surprise that 65% of these attempts were on, on new questions. Now, these were the results of the trial. And again, I wanna thank you guys for, for your enthusiastic participation. I also wanna tell you why we do these trials. What's the benefit of it? EGMAT provides um, two of the mo world's most accurate diagnostic platforms um, um, when it comes to the GMAT world. One is our Sigma X Mocs, and the second is Scholarinium. Now, what makes these platforms um, so that these super accurate, these super precise is, is two things. One is uh, our algorithms, which we use for score estimation. And we have a, a, a team of quants that does these research on, on what we call as a maximum likelihood algorithms. And, and the second is, is, you know, the quality of questions and, and, you know, the characterization of questions over here. So when it comes to the second challenge, which is, hey, how do you get good quality questions that are precisely characterized? There are two challenges that exist. So let me just do this over here. The first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that for every brand new question that you create, you get enough attempts so that, um, so that you can really characterize those questions. The second challenge that you have is that those, re those attempts should come from a representative population. Which means that, hey, you don't want to get all, uh, you know, you don't want to get attempts from a, from a population where you, know, you have a ton of smart people. You don't want to get attempts from a population where you have just weak people. You, you want to get attempts from a population that's a representative of the test taking population that actually takes the, the GMAT. So to do that, we, we, we kind of create a bunch of questions, in this case, 200 questions, 200 brand new questions, put them in a platform such as Scholarinium. Now, we don't just put new questions, we actually, combine new plus old questions. So we have about two thirds of these questions are new and about one third of these are old. Now these old questions are, are very well characterized. Each one of them has upwards of a thousand um, uh, attempts. So we know they're easy, medium or hard. And, and, and we get, our, our goal really is to get about 70 plus attempts on each of these questions. Once you get 70 attempts on each question, I think there's some, you can, you can characterize it within what we call as 5% accuracy level and, and, and uh, or 95% confidence level is what we call it within, within EGMAT. And once you're able to do that, it's, it's good enough to, to be put in one of these platforms, which is Sigma X or Scholarinium, where you continue to get more data. Now we put these questions over there and, and then we look at the attempts We look at the attempts on these old questions. These questions are already well characterized and, and then we really say, okay, for each of these questions, we have a reference accuracy level and we have, which is, which is what we believe is the actual accuracy level and we have the, the accuracy level from the sample, which is, which is, you know, what you guys, these 70 to 80 attempts that have come within this trial. In most instances and pretty much all of these trials, um, these numbers are very accurate, within 1-2%. to 2%. percent you would be surprised how accurate these are, which means that, hey, if the reference accuracy level of a question is 58%, which means 58% of the people get it right, then from the sample, that number would be either between 56% to 60%, which means that the sample is, is, is very representative of, 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 of the population. There's no bias in the sample. 
But if it so happens that the sample accuracy level, which is the accuracy level in the trial, turns out to be, let's say, 65%, this tells us that uh, people who came into the trial are smarter. It allows us to adjust for that bias in, 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 in this question. So it creates what we call as a bias factor. And, and accordingly, we adjust the accuracy of all questions. If, on the other hand, the accuracy turns out to be to, 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 to be less than 58%, it turns out to be, let's say, 48%, then essentially, you know, there are more weak people in, the, in, in, in this particular group, people who, uh, the, the, the population of that, that took, the, the, the sample population here had, had more weak people. Again, accordingly, we adjust the bias factor to get a more precise estimate of these accuracies. So hopefully, I know this was technical, but hopefully um, you guys understand the process that we go through to make sure that when you attempt questions on these platforms, you get um, the best estimates with regards to where you currently stand and so that you can build your study plans for the next steps. Now, this is not the only trial that we do. We plan to do another trial within 30 days. And for those of you who missed out on this trial, be on the lookout for our announcement for the next trial uh, around the 20th of November. Overall, happy learning.